The question of mass migration could cost the Tory party the next election. Mass migration is not the norm in our history, it's the exception. And never before has there been such a large movement of people. And there's no reason to accept this as the status quo. Net migration stands provisionally at 672,000 for 2023, and this when we've got a government that promised to get the numbers down into the tens of thousands, and it lets down an electorate that has given repeated mandates to get the numbers under control. As I said last week, legal migration is technically an easier problem to solve than illegal migration. It doesn't involve human rights, it doesn't particularly involve the courts. It is an administrative system that can be changed by secondary legislation. Moreover, it seems the former Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, had a plan to deal with this, one that could work and get numbers under control. The Daily Telegraph has seen the agreement between Suella Braverman and Rishi Sunak that was agreed in return for Suella's endorsement last year. Suella's crucial endorsement because had she endorsed Boris Johnson instead, he would probably be Prime Minister now rather than Rishi Sunak. So it was worth getting her agreement for her four-point plan which set out return net migration numbers to below pre-Brexit levels of 239,000, just over a third of the current number. The first point was to raise the salary threshold of skilled foreign workers from £26,200 a year to £40,000. The second was to restrict the number of dependents entering the UK. Dependents made up a quarter of non-EU student immigration and nearly 50% of non-EU work immigration. Third was to axe the two-year stay after a graduate visa, reduced down to a four-month grace period. Study is the largest component of non-EU migration. And last, the fourth point, was to crack down on Mickey Mouse degrees for foreign students which don't particularly help our economy. The then Home Secretary also proposed scrapping the really scandalous shortage occupation list, which enables companies to pay 80% of salaries to foreign workers, giving them an incentive to say that they suffer from a shortage and undercutting the domestic workforce, making the country overall poorer. In other words, the Home Secretary, former Home Secretary, was serious about tackling mass migration. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister today at Hampton Court Palace at an investment summit seemed to encourage even more migration. But we don't have a monopoly on talent in this country. And we recognize that nearly half of our most innovative companies have an immigrant founder. So if you're an innovator, an entrepreneur, a researcher, you should know that the most competitive visa regime for highly skilled international talent is right here in the UK. The government was questioned today on the migration figures and the immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, gave this response. I've already announced a specific policy with respect to dependents, which comes into force at the beginning of next year. We think that will have a substantive impact uh, upon the levels of net migration, but as the Prime Minister has said, we're keeping all options under review and will take further action as required. But at most, the reforming measures to dependents will cut numbers by about 150,000. That would still leave us with over half a million net new migrants. And this is too much. James Cleverley, the current Home Secretary, said he is still reviewing measures to curb migration. But I don't think he needs to look much further than his predecessor's plan. Henry VI, who became king in 1422, suffered from catatonic inertia for 18 months, beginning in the middle of 1453. Since then, we've never had so inert a government until perhaps today. The current government seems similarly inert and needs to awake from its catalepsy if it wishes to win the election.